Good morning everyone. We are just anchored off this stunning island. It's called Capas Island. We've just spent overnight here and as beautiful as this island is and this anchorage is, um, basically what we did was <laughs> fix various components of the boat all afternoon. But that's okay, beautiful setting for it, why not? Uh, one of the issues was the ice machine, so Nick has been attempting to fix that. Um, and I'll just throw back quickly to the main issue with the ice machine. I have the solenoid for the ice machine, which I believe is blocked, but it closes. I'm going to hot wire this solenoid across the battery from the dinghy. Because that's a 12 volt battery. I just want to get this hot wired so that we can uh, try and get this clean. So that's what I'm up to now. Was there a physical obstruction? I don't know. We're talking about something on a microscopic level that I can't see, and it's a tiny black hole that I can't see. So all I did was manually, well, electrically force the solenoid to open using the boat battery, just blew through it a few times so that anything in there is just dislodged. Okay, now you're up to date. We can uh, crack on and give you guys an update on the ice machine situation. So unfortunately this morning, it is not working again. We've got no ice machine, but okay, a couple of points. Okay, so basically we have, I'll show you this, we have these bowls and they're, they're just, they're, you wanted to make cake on board. But what you can do is if you put water in here, if you, if you put it on the side, like you do in a barista with a coffee, a milking jug, you create a vortex. And therefore, because it's kind of, it's stainless steel, all the shit that comes out of your tank will literally form in the middle. So you actually collect sediment really quickly. I disconnected the, the water into the ice machine, collected two liters of water as a vortex, and there was just a whole heap of like gritty matter. It's kind of off-white, it's non-dissolvable, inorganic. So, it, and I can feel it between my fingers. It's like it's like uh, the consistency of maybe icing sugar. Icing sugar melts. Mm -hmm. Caster sugar? The, the consistency. There's the sort of particle size. So I don't... Caster sugar. Like very fine sand. Like okay. very, very, very fine sand. Oh, my, oh pedantic little sugar. <laughs> I'm not very pedantic. All right, so it's like very, very, very fine sand. It's very fine matter. Yeah. It looks to me like gel coat dust. Yeah. It's very fine matter. It's like polishing dust from something. Then what I did, I took our freshwater deck wash hose, connected the water out to that hose and just bled the system for about five minutes. So we put about, I don't know, I would say 40 to 50 litres overboard. Yeah. And then collected the, the water again and there's still sediment in it. So it's unlikely to be residual in the pipes. There is something going on with the quality of our water. I mean, these even aren't even microplastics. These are macroplastics. We have plastic dust in our water. So that's not good. Uh, anyway, so we've got bottled water anyway. We have a filtration system anyway, so that's good. So once again this morning, I took the solenoid off the ice machine, opened it up by hot wiring it to the dinghy battery, then blew it through so it's at least closed and we'll leave that off so at least it's not dripping now yeah. so that's that's that part addressed that we end up with a dripping ice machine which basically means apart from the fact it drips and it gets the floor wet it also means that the pump isn't continually cycling it's making about a litre an hour but it's a pressurised system and I really have got the a hard on against you know pressurised systems that aren't pressure sealed it's just it's it, it f***ed with my OCD mm -hmm. anyways so that's at least not dripping. So look, we have no ice machine, but at least we don't have a dripping water system. We are, it's repressurized and we'll get on with that. But yeah, I'm just, it's just, it, it's frustrating because there is an expression which I'm not sure translates, well, if it's used around the world, but you know, uh, sinking the ship for a haypenneth of tar, which isn't obviously, my mother used to use it all the time, but you understand what it means that for the sake of essentially what would have been possibly a 10 minute job to just go in with a jet wash and a broom and just scrub that all out before it was fitted. You know, the amount of hours I've spent on this bullshit, it's nuts. The entire system's blocked up. Thankfully, when we specified this boat, we had one freshwater toilet put in and one saltwater toilet put in specifically for this issue. That if we ever had a problem with our freshwater system or ran low on fresh water, we didn't have to buck, uh, buck it and chuck it. Anyway, look, that's that done. As I said, at least the positive from this morning is that the I've managed to get the ice machine to stop dripping water and reseal the system. 
the frustration is that we will then need to move on and hopefully we haven't damaged the solenoid. I don't think we have. It is literally just a, a mechanical magnetic switch. Anyway, look, there's this morning's shenanigans. I haven't even finished my breakfast yet. It is 20 past nine and we should hopefully leave within an hour to head towards Tiamon. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. All right guys, so today we are heading to Tiamen Island. It is about 150 miles away, so an overnighter for sure. And we are aiming to get there kind of midday tomorrow. So we don't want to get there too early. We certainly don't want to get there at uh, while it's still dark. And so we're going to leave this morning at about 10. Yeah, it's going to be another overnight sail. The weather looks pretty good. Um, we're going to have some kind of fairly light a bit of a light breeze I think kind of 10 to 13 knots true and then I think as we get further towards Tiamen so as we head further south the wind will swing around a little bit more to the north and we're actually going to be enjoying some downwind conditions which normally I'd be really excited about but I think it's going to be overnight so unfortunately not going to be flying the spinnaker overnight but hopefully a little bit later today we might get the opportunity to do that which would be great. We're having a shower but yeah, for some reason, if I use that, it blocks everything up. Yeah, it's weird. So it seems to me that every time Nick has a shower off the stern, uh, the water just kind of packs up. Are you decent? That sarong is very... There's a, there's a length discrepancy between the length of my sarong and the length of my schlong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Algae in the tank is my fault. Yeah. So basically, I... I should have drained the tank down before we left for two months. We were in such a rush. I didn't do it. I'm not, it's not mitigation. This tank should have been drained down. And as such, we have algal growth in there that I've tried to kill using my normal way of doing things, which is to, well, we actually bought a, a, a proprietary marine sterilizer that's environmentally friendly, but it hasn't fixed it. So we're just continuing. To, so basically I'm going to polish this entire water system when we get into uh, Tiamon. Yeah. And that should hopefully drag the shit out of the tank. Okay. But for now, just game. <laughs> I mean, now look, I think this is important. Now what I want you to do is clean that. That's disgusting. That's different to what has been in there. It's been like all algae and now it's all just shit. Can I close the tap? I'll close the tap, it's fine. All right, ready to go? Uh, just take the water out from the uh, strings. You take this disgusting. Oh, it's filthy. It's just the, it's the ship that. We don't use that towel to clean ourselves. This is like the cleaning the boat towel. All right, we're off. It's just started raining for the first time, actually. We haven't had much rain, have we? Quite a bit of rain I can see behind us there. And you can see the rain in front of us as well. Creeping closer and closer. That's crazy, I can actually hear it, but I can't feel it yet. Hey? Yeah, let's just wait until the rain passes. So you can like literally see it coming. It is nice, it's actually really lovely. Wait a few minutes, <laughs> we'll try again. Brandon stops. Let's try that again. You okay? Put it straight back into it. Okay. Wind, so. Yeah, good, good idea. where they're coming. It's meant to be like 10 to 13 knots and it's 20. So yeah, creeping down. Nick, let me put some top of 
what I need to learn to do and what I haven't thought of doing as my fault is um, to keep the topping lift on a little bit so not just let it off completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just slacken it off. Yeah, slacken it off rather than just like let it off because that's not what I'm doing. So now it's just slack. So when I looked at the forecast this morning and last night and the day before, I said to Nick, heading down to Timon Island, it's going to be slow going because we have a breeze for sure, but it's going to start off pretty light, like maybe 10 knots. And then as we get further towards Tim and it's going to be coming from uh, behind us. So we'll have a lovely downwind sail, but I don't think it's going to be a fast one. And you know, on paper, it looked really lovely and comfortable, slow but comfortable. And in reality, what we have is 20 knots on uh, port of the beam at 60 degrees apparent. And we're doing eight and a half, nine knots. So fast, but yeah, not quite the downwind sail that I ordered. That's fine. Cracking sail, it's a grey day and the seas are pretty lumpy, but we are flying along, so I'm happy about that, especially after our trip down, our very, very slow trip down from Pattaya to Terendanu. I'll never, well, I was about to say I'll never complain about the wind again, but I definitely will, but uh, certainly it's nice to have a sailing breeze. We've got a reef in the main and What's wrong? Alright. So our first waypoint is about 25 miles away I think. So we should get there fairly soon at this rate. And then we do make a course change and we are um, going further south. So our course is changing by probably about I'd say maybe 15 degrees, 20 degrees, not by a huge amount, but hopefully by enough to put the wind on our beam. And then, as I said, as we travel, travel further south down the coast, the wind bends, the wind direction bends around anyway to come from further behind. So, you know, that's fine. The boat's really comfortable. Um, you know, she handles it so well, I must say. And uh, yeah, you know, fast is good. Never complain about a fast sail. Quite big seas, quite big swell. I should have known because all night long we had quite a bit of swell coming into the anchorage. It's like ripples. That's what it was. It was like ripples coming into the anchorage. And I was like, hmm, interesting. That doesn't quite tee up with the fact that we have very little wind in the anchorage. Um, so I thought, okay, obviously something's, something's going on outside. But it was so hard to believe in that beautiful calm anchorage that out here be blowing 20 knots with like fairly lumpy seas. So anyway, next time I'll trust my senses and my instincts because I did think to myself, there must be some swell out there. I'm off watch, Nick is on watch. I'm going to sit back and uh, just get my sea legs for a bit. I've had a little bowl of cereal to try and line my stomach. So yeah, wouldn't mind a cup of ginger tea right about now. Might have to get up and make myself one. <laughs> Afternoon, well, Portside Helm, Rivers 2. It is lunchtime. Well, this rate will be in Tiamat Island. Four o'clock in the morning. Not quite what I had planned. So I seem to be in the habit of either severely underestimating or severely overestimating our boat speed at the moment. I think that the forecast or the, I'm gonna say fairly inaccurate forecast has nothing to do with that. Apparent wind speed is now about 14 and we are doing about eight knots-ish. Apparent wind angle of 90. But the wind's not particularly consistent, so every now and again it kind of 
changes direction slightly, it intensifies, it just eases off a little bit. So our boat speed is anywhere between like six and a half and nine and a half knots. Um, that's kind of where, look, that's kind of where we've been today. But at the moment, yep, yeah, eight knots. Arrival time, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Not ideal. And yeah, the sea state's still pretty lumpy. And I think that this is pretty much what we're gonna have all night. Perhaps things will ease off a little bit around two or three o'clock in the morning. We'll see. And the further towards Tiamen we get, the more the wind will just back around a little bit. So we'll just see what the night brings. At the moment it is about five o'clock in the afternoon, 4.30. And Nick's on watch and I'm chilling out. And you know, it's a gray old day. There's no sun to be seen and it's just like lumpy seas and wind on the beam. And we've got, still got a reef in by the way. So, you know, our wind speed, our apparent wind speed is only 13 knots, but we've got a reef in and we're still doing like seven and a half, eight and a half knots. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm enjoying the wind while I can. Once we get into the Malacca Strait, I think it's going to be a lot of motoring. So I'm not complaining about sailing today. Not one little bit, especially after the four day crossing of the Gulf of Thailand. Yeah, this is fine. I just uh, saw this. I don't like seeing squares. No, I, I can see lots of things, but I never like seeing a square on the horizon. No, 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 but a square. And then when you see a red light and a green light on a square, that scares me. Because the point about it is that, you know, you don't know how far these boats are traveling. Is it, I'm not even sure it's an AIS. No. So, I mean, the one thing about AIS and with radar, but more AIS is easier to just, it will give you a, a rate of closing. Well, we're settling down for night watch. We the boat is seems very settled. We've got about uh, anything between eight and a half and ten knots. The swell is still big. Yeah. And this is like this is proper Atlantic swell. Yeah. Well, it's funny because we're coming down the Bay. It's not like the Oh, and of course, yeah, we've. Oh, it's a very fair point. We literally we're south of uh, we're south of the peninsula of Vietnam. Yeah, no, no, I get it. No, you're right. The fetch. The fetch has now just carried, you know, a couple of, well, I don't know how much further, but yeah, the fetch has increased. So this is where we get in this big file. The boat is just hugely comfortable. It's batting along. We have uh, one reef in, uh, full jib. She's just very comfortable. You know, we had uh, frozen or defrosted hot tire for dinner. We've just been sitting drinking cold drinks all day. We don't have an ice machine, we've got ice cubes. And yeah, we're just, getting the boat to settle down. I've got about another uh, another 40 minutes left on my watch and I'm going to get, have the three hours sleep and then I'll take 10 till we only work by the boat clock so it's an hour later in Malaysia but we only go on boat time and then I'll do three hours you do three hours and then um, hopefully between about 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. we should make landfall. Can I have to say how nice this place is? Yeah, Are you feeling okay? Let's get on with the exciting matter of polishing our water system. This is my plan. I thought. I'm just going to just create, uh, create a, a polishing system for our fresh water. Yep. It's just too much shit in it. Yeah, but I can also see all the sediment being sucked into the pipe. Mirrors are just turning brown. It's turning brown. That's the, the top. 